How's it going? Welcome to my very, very disorganized office. Um, this is a review and a first impressions video of the HP Envy X360 15 inch laptop with Ryzen 5 processor. Now, there's quite a few reviews of the 13 inch version of this two in one floating around out there. Um, and I admit that's probably the one that a lot of people are going to prefer over this 15 inch. Um, it's the 13 inch just simply has better configuration options and definitely better screen options, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm not much of a laptop user. Um, I really only need one when I'm traveling or away from home and I need something to do like some really light uh, photo editing, organization of files, um, and then definitely writing. Um, so I have a tablet for media consumption and then I have this beefy desktop behind me for all real photo and video work. So a laptop is more of an afterthought for me. Um, the Lenovo 3 Yoga that I have been using for the last four years, it's really starting to show its age, um, but it served me well. Uh, it had for, at the time, top specs that you could get in a form factor like that. Um, and it's, as you can see, it's just ridiculously thin and light. Uh, it is also a two-in-one that could be used as a tablet. The biggest problem with this Lenovo is the typing experience. These keys are awful. I hated typing on it, um, which is kind of the major reason why you have a laptop. You're gonna be typing on it. Um, and there's not even a function row. So a lot of these keys had to do double duty for doing all kinds of different things. So it was just a pain in the butt to use, but fine, whatever. I've made that back to factory. It's still pretty snappy and um, probably gonna sell that. Moving on, I decided to go with the HP Envy X360 15 inch two in one for a couple of reasons. Um, price, price, and price. And then there's a few other tiny reasons uh, that I chose this over other laptops in its price range, uh, and I'll get into that. First, looking at the HP chassis, it is an all metal build, and uh, you cannot open it with one finger, which is kind of a pain in the butt but you can open it with two fingers. Anyway, um, the, the feel of this unit is super premium for its price range. Um, like I said, it's all metal. Um, it's, it's nicely stiff and rigid. There's not a whole lot of flex in the keyboard deck. Um, and just the look of it, uh, it the, the branding is really nice on there with some shiny HP on there. The hinges are nice. They appear to, to work perfectly fine. And uh, it's just, it's just re really got a great feel to it. It feels far more expensive than it is. Now, with that metal build, um, it's also heavy. So this is a heavy boy at 4.4 pounds, which coming from this 2.6 pound guy uh, was a big, big deal. Um, so using, using this in tablet mode is actually pretty pretty good. You can, you can hold it with one hand. You don't get too fatigued after a couple of minutes of holding it, maybe even 30 minutes of holding it. Um, it's, it's not an iPad at one pound, but this guy, if you <clears throat> put it in its tablet mode, I find it very kind of difficult to hold with one hand. Um, I certainly don't feel comfortable holding it in one hand. It's, it's heavy and I don't think I would be I don't think I would be doing that for long. Um, there are reasons why you have a two-in-one um, and uh, it's gonna be in tablet mode almost never uh, is I think where I'm going with this. I'll be comparing this laptop two-in-one with the Lenovo Flex 5 14-inch two-in-one and the Asus ZenBook 14-inch thin and light notebook. Since these models are all on the basic price point uh, depending on where you can find them and if they're on sale. Um, they're all pretty much at or under $600, maybe around $600. Um, just understand that the Asus ZenBook is a huge line of laptops that they offer. I'm specifically speaking of their entry-level ZenBook, and that's specifically the model Q407IQ-BR5N4. And for reference, this HP was $579 bought on sale at Best Buy. That is um, for the eight gigabyte RAM, 256 gigabyte storage model. Uh, the 
Flex 5 from Lenovo, I found actually for $519 at Office Depot. That's also eight gigabyte, 256 gigabyte. And then I swear, I swear I saw the Zen book for $599 somewhere, but I, I couldn't find it a second time. So maybe it's out there for sale for 600 bucks. If it's not, it's like 649 or something like that. So right around the same price. The HP Envy is available in the Ryzen 4500U and also the Ryzen 7 4700U processors. Um, I chose to go with the 4500U um, basically because I didn't see in all the data out there the difference that um, the benefit that I would get for maybe 20% more uh, performance for 35% more price because um, for the 4700 U unit is about $200 more than the $4,500, uh, the 4,500U. Uh, as I said, this, my unit has uh, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and that is in two by four uh, gigabyte dual channel. Uh, that's pretty important because in some of the other laptops in this price range, they'll give you eight gigabytes, but um, they are only operating in a single channel mode. Um, the other, situation uh, is that if you wanted to go to a dual channel mode, you have to bump up to the 16 gigabyte uh, version of the laptop and then you're spending a little bit more money for that. This HP is the only one of the three that I was looking at that has sodium modules in it. So you could uh, physically take the back off and pop in your own modules and you could have up to 32 gigabytes of RAM in this if you installed it yourself. So that's pretty good. My HP has 256 gigs of NVMe SSD M.2 storage. All right, on to the rest of the build. For ports, the HP has a barrel type uh, power plug right here. Um, it also has a USB type C right here, which does support charging. Um, the USB C is also full. You know, with a dongle, you can do VGA out, display port, you can do whatever you want. It's not Thunderbolt, but uh, it's definitely everything else. It has USB-A type ports on either side, one on each side. This one has an interesting little weird flappy door that you have to use because the chassis is just too thin to have a full-sized uh, USB that far forward on it. The HDMI is full though here, it doesn't have a flappy door that's available. It has a combo headphone microphone jack right here. And finally on this other side, it has a full SD card reader. In comparison, the Lenovo Flex has a barrel plug charger hole on the side, but it doesn't ship with that kind of a charger connection. It only ships, it has a USB-C as well. It only ships with the USB-C connector to plug into its brick into the wall. And that's all good and fine unless you want to run power and a USB-C device. You only got the one charge port, or you've only got the one port, so you can't do both at the same time, which is a little annoying. So you'd either have to figure out how to do it under battery power or buy yourself a, um, I'm pointing to the wrong thing, or buy yourself a, a, a charger with the barrel plug. As far as the ZenBook goes, it has pretty much all the same I.O. except for the fact that while the HP has a full SD card reader, the ZenBook only has a micro SD card reader. And literally, I'd like to see those just completely disappear from laptops and notebooks and stuff like that. I don't know a single person who can actually use micro SD. I guess if you're just popping in your GoPro footage or your drone footage, fine. But uh, everything that I use on anything that I would be doing on on a location somewhere, it's all SD. Uh, and I can always use an SD to micro SD converter. I cannot use a micro SD to SD converter. They're, they're, those don't exist. So it's for my use, I need this as this full SD card reader. It's just really, really useful. If the HP does have one weakness, it's gotta be its screen. Uh, HP states that this is a 250 nit, 15.6 inch touchscreen, and 250 nits is not very bright at all. Um, I'm in a basically pretty bright room in here and I have the brightness set on full. While it's okay right now to look at, I definitely would not take this outside. Um, first of all, it's got a glossy screen um, and at 250 nits, it's just not bright enough to do anything in, in sunlight. Uh, it would be a problem. And that's where I'm gonna bring it back to the 13 inch version of this. The 13 inch version offers three different screens that you can get a 300 nit, 400 nit, and even a 1000 nit brightness screen. And that would be the more 
attractive uh, screen brightness for most people if they're going to be out, um, say, outside at a park trying to write something or something like that. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take this laptop outside to do a lot of actual work. I would. Uh, I would definitely want a, a much brighter screen out there. But for indoors, I think it's just fine. The uh, problem that comes with that though is that the color rendition is not very good on this screen either. Um, they state like 46% of NTSC colors or something like that. I'm not really sure what that means, but I do know that when I have compared it to my screens on my desktop and even the screen on this laptop, um, these colors look terrible. They're, they're not uh, terribly bright. They're, they're not very vivid. Uh, the saturation is not all that good either. So if, if, if you're gonna be doing photo editing on this, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're gonna do video color correction on this, absolutely, no way. Um, but you know, for, for general purposes, a student or a writer or something like that, even a coder, this laptop's pretty great because the screen does not matter all that much in those cases. Now in comparison, the, the Lenovo IdeaFlex or Flex 4 15, whatever that one is, it, I put it on the screen, that has an equally terrible screen. Um, I don't know if it's more terrible than this one, but it, let's say it's the same, it's the same terrible screen. The ZenBook has a much better screen uh, they quote that it is 300 nits and covers 100% of sRGB and that's going to be very usable for most people for most situations. It just means that for this price point you're probably not going to find a screen that's all that great. I'm just saying. The 13 inch if you wanted to go up uh, to, if you wanted to go to the 13 inch with the 300 nit screen um, and equal uh, stats or equal specs, uh, you're looking at about $200 more than this right here. So even though it's a smaller package, you're gonna be paying more. That's just the way things work. So if the ZenBook has a much better screen and the Lenovo offers more memory for the same price, then why did I choose to go with this HP? Uh, even though it's heavier and it's larger. Well, the main thing that I do on a laptop is I type on it and um, it's something that I absolutely hated about this laptop because these keys are terrible, but whatever. Um, the, 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 the HP here has a full sized keyboard. Um, I mean, you've got a number pad on, on the side here. Uh, my fingers fit on the keycaps and it just felt more comfortable to actually use. Um, I was able to type very, very quickly a paragraph, only making a couple mistakes, and the, and the backspace key was in the exact right place that I'm used to, that I'm accustomed to, to um, uh, fix those mistakes. When I went to the Lenovo unit, I put my fingers on the keyboard, started typing, and I was making mistake after mistake after mistake, and it was actually very difficult to fix those mistakes with the placement of the backspace key. I, it just didn't feel right, and that's something that's kind of important when you're laptop shopping. Um, the keyboard is important. Um, it's you can't change it, so I mean you're stuck with it. Uh, you, you better be comfortable for you to type on. Both the HP and the Lenovo have dark keyboards with white backlighting, and the the Asus ZenBook has a gray finish, a light, super light gray finish with slightly darker gray lettering on the keycaps and a white back uh, backlighting. Um, it really made it difficult to, even in regular light, it made it difficult to see what the keys said. Um, and I don't know if it would get better in a dark room, but, but it just didn't make any sense to deal with a keyboard that even in good light, I couldn't see what I was looking at. And even though I touch type, it's still, I still have to look for, you know, certain keys to do certain things. And that would just, I just, I didn't like it. So that's it, that's all. One more difference between the, uh, the HP and the Lenovo is the placement of the biometrics. And on the HP, it's right here. Uh, very, very fast, it works super well. On the Lenovo, it's more on the wrist, uh, wrist rest deck. Um, just depends on what you prefer. Some people prefer that because they, they know exactly where to go. This is almost like a, an extra key. You have to look at it every time. So if that's gonna be a problem for you, maybe whatever. Um, some other weird reasons why I decided the HP was better was uh, just the build quality. Um, when you put it into tablet mode, even though I'm not gonna be using it in tablet mode very much, um, it looks just as good in tablet mode as it does in laptop mode or closed. 
Um, it just, it seems like the hinge fit better when it's open, closed, and in tablet mode. Uh, the Lenovo, it just always felt like it was a little like offset, strangely. It just didn't look as good, so I didn't know if it would be comfortable to use in, in uh, tablet mode. It just, uh, that's just a little, small little issue. Um, another issue is the speakers. So the speakers on this, they're made by Bang & Olufsen. I don't know if that means anything, it just means that they slapped their name on it. Um, the volume gets a little louder on this unit than on the Lenovo, and it has a little wider representation. The Lenovo unit just has no bass whatsoever. This somehow has bass, and I don't know how, because the only place that sound comes out are these little grills right here, these two little speakers. I thought at first that this whole thing, because it says Bang & Olufsen right here, I thought this whole thing was like a speaker bar. It is not. It's like a, it's probably just an in, intake uh, grill for air, and then it comes out of the back right down here. But no, the only place the sound comes out are those two little speakers, and somehow it makes some decent mid-range and bass. A little bit of the speakers here. Oh, and then right there I got a copyright strike. I did not think, <clears throat> I wasn't thinking that um, I just played a random YouTube video and of course that was copyrighted. So we have, this is the next day, had to uh, delete that upload and um, <clears throat> we're gonna try this again. So although you're not gonna really see here any difference between the XP I'm sorry, between the HP and the Asus or the uh, Lenovo. I do have my old laptop here, but I'm just gonna be at normal enjoyment distance from these two things, and I'm going to play the old Lenovo Yoga 3. And then we'll listen to this. That's loud. Strong like a tree. We'll try a different song here. We're gonna try, ooh, hip hop, okay. That's pretty low. You can actually hear the song. It's probably not a good, probably not a good example. Let's do some electronic hip hop here. I promise that's all the way up. This just has a fuller sound. It's louder. Far more enjoyable. Yeah. So there you have it much louder. And I'll even say that at lower volumes, at lower volumes, this sounds much better than this over here. So if I were to lower the volume, again, this stupid keyboard, I have to hold down the function key to turn the volume down. Yeah, that just doesn't sound as good. I mean, even at, even at really low volumes, Yeah, it just, this sounds so much better. So there you have it. I mean, and you're not gonna be thumping a party with a laptop, but it sounds it sounds better than the Lenovo. It certainly sounds better than this thing. Um, this, the speakers come out of these two little girls right here. Um, but I don't really expect, you know, this to make all that good sound. I wasn't able to listen to the sound on the Asus unit, but uh, that was pretty much out of the running anyway. Um, it just, it, it wasn't what was gonna suit me. There is a reason to go with the Asus ZenBook, however, and that's because this HP and the Lenovo both just use video from the Radeon graphics that are built into the AMD chip on here. The Asus ZenBook actually has a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce 350 graphics accelerator with its own two gigabytes of video memory in the thing. Um, 
so it doesn't have to share the RAM with the unit to run video and stuff like that. So it's gonna be better for probably video production and games and stuff like that. Now, the ZenBook does not have a touch screen at all, whereas the other two do. So it, it all just depends on what exactly you're looking for. When I started this search of replacing this old laptop with something new, I actually 100% was gonna go with the, uh, with the Lenovo Flex 14, but with the 4700U and 16 gigs of, uh, of RAM with 512 gigs of storage. And I found that at Costco for $750. I thought that was a great price. Um, but then I realized after doing some research that the most of the storage didn't matter. This thing has 512 gigabytes of storage in it, but I've never filled it. Uh, I, there was no reason, I mean, to have that much. And besides, you can get a two terabyte USB-C hard drive for 50 bucks or 55 bucks on Amazon lately. So it's not like I'm going to be wanting for space. It, it, that's just not a thing. And then, um, you know, for $579, I, I just didn't see the reason to spend an extra 200 to get slightly more of everything in the same unit. And, and I just like this better. I think it looks nicer. It definitely feels nicer. And that's something that matters to me as a user. Uh, I want to feel good. I want to feel good using it. I don't want to hate opening this thing to type on because I know it's going to be just murder to type on. I'm not going to enjoy that experience and it's going to keep this thing closed. Whereas I might be more excited to open this thing up and start writing. But so those are basically my opinions. Um, you'll notice that I didn't do any performance measurements like um, things like Cinebench or productivity uh, testing and stuff like that. Um, the reason is because you don't care really. I mean, those are just numbers and it doesn't really matter. Uh, other people have done that with the 4500U and the 4700U um, and the Intel chips. So you can, you can look at a list of like all that it does. I did run Cinebench 15 on this thing. I got um, 900 points on it, which is uh, easily four times more than this. And it was really on par with uh, the desktop i7 4700K. That was a really popular chip a couple of years ago. And that's a four core, eight thread processor where this is just six cores, six, six threads. So really that's not all that important to me. Uh, what's important to me is taking this somewhere, opening it up, banging out maybe a script or, or uh, corrections to somebody's stuff that they have sent me. And uh, that's, what's, that's what's really important. This said it does have Wi-Fi 6 in it. I don't know, who knows? Um, I just have a regular router that I believe it's just AC. So it's not like I'm gonna get that benefit of super fast wireless speeds. It doesn't matter to me. What does matter to me is this looks nice. It feels nice. It looks premium. It definitely looks like I've spent more than $579 on it. Um, you might be able to see that it does pick up fingerprints pretty well. Uh, that's a negative, I guess, over some of the other in this uh, price range because they're plastic shells and they don't pick up fingerprints as much. I don't really know. I'm sure you could wipe them off and clean it though, but I just like it and I'm happy that I bought it and I don't have any regrets as of yet. If you have any questions or comments about my review, please feel free to leave them. I usually read them all and get sad when you're mean to me, but you know, that's just life, that's cool. Uh, so that, again, that was the HP Envy X360 15 inch, not the 13 inch. There's way more reviews of that thing out there. I have not seen a review of the 15 inch that I liked yet, so I made one. See you next time.